There he is, Mr. Ed Milet. How you doing, man? I'm good, brother. How are you? Look at that view, man. Can you see it? Uh, yeah, yeah. It comes in and out of focus, but I can see it. It looks great. It's not bad. Gorgeous. It yeah, it's a beautiful day. It's a little cold, so I'm a little bit buttoned up, but it's all good. I'm in Toronto, Canada, man, so cold is a whole oh, new level. That's yeah. <laughs> totally different. I love Toronto. That's one of my favorite cities on earth. That's like one of the most beautiful, modern, great cities in the world. So, by the way, I want to tell you one thing. Your, uh, your content is so good. That's why I'm, I mean, how I found you is your content. I obviously did some stuff on me, but you, you produce some of the best stuff out there. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, I, I've, been, I've been diving into your world. And the Stephanie McMahon interview that you did yeah. was fire. Thank you. Yeah, I love, I love that. that one. Yeah, thank uh, you. She, she's an amazing woman. Yeah. And the one you did with David Meltzer, sitting, sitting, basically looks like the same view, like you're sitting on the beach there. Yeah, we, was sat, awesome. right, we sat right down there. That's where we were sitting, looking out at this. I don't know if you can see it or not, but that's where, that's where we sat, so David and I. So for my audience who may not be as familiar with, with what you're up to, um, Ed Milet, Mr. Max Out, had a huge <laughs> success as an entrepreneur and now is on a mission to inspire and motivate people to live their best lives. Um, we did a top 10 on him that was fire and uh, looking forward to featuring more of your stuff. But, Thank you. You know, I'm curious, why, why this? You know, like you've had yeah. so much success. You had your, your financial success. I know, you know you're back and what you came from and you've turned yeah. it around and such an amazing story. Why now spend the, the, I think what you call it, the second chapter of your life, yeah. spending now giving back and, and helping people? Like, what motivated that? That's a great question. Um, the conversation started with Tony Robbins. So Tony's a friend of mine and, and uh, you know, kind of knew I've been speaking on stage and stuff for a long time and just said, hey, listen, you know, this space needs some people that have real content. And I don't mean that negatively to anybody who else is in the space, but there are, you know, a lot of guys repeat themselves over and over and over and um i don't know man i here's the truth because i ask myself this all the time I, i'm doing seven podcasts today i'm recording three shows of my own tomorrow and there was a point in time in my life where a day like today i'd probably just be sitting on this <laughs> this beach and now those you know that sort of gone by the wayside i think the answer is this i really do love people i love helping people and i didn't get to where i am alone i'm not that bright of a guy i'm not dumb but I'm not high IQ. I'm not incredibly gifted or talented. I really had a series of mentors enter my life, most of which all at the right time that helped me get to next levels and stretch my vision and think bigger and course correct me. And so I just feel like I spent the first half of my life kind of building my dream and kind of my resume. And I want to spill the second half of my life, spend it helping other people build their dream and their resume. And so I love it. I mean, it's not work to me. Um, I've enjoyed this time, this last couple of years, more than any two years of my entire life, just because I've got to know all kinds of different people and fall in love with people in a way that I didn't, I didn't have before, and I was just sort of a private rich dude, so I'm loving it. What was the first thing that you did that said, okay, I'll give this a shot? Was it a speech or a video? What happened? Well, I've been speaking for a really, really long time, but what it really was, it was actually a confrontation and a good one. We were on my balcony, and Tony said, hey, you need to get into this space. I said, look, man, I, I like this, but I like that I can go into a restaurant and not everybody knows me, right? I'm, I'm going to mm. cuss right now, so I'll give everybody permission, but, um, but I just want to say this. He said to me, he goes, that's why you're a loser. Mm. That kind of grabbed me at my fire pit, right? And I go, what? He goes, well, you say you want to help all these people, but you don't really want to inconvenience yourself to do it at all. So mm. you don't really want to help everybody. And I'm like, you know what? And my son was there. I said, get your phone. How do you do this Instagram thing? I'm not kidding you. And okay. my son holds the phone. I go, blah, 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 click. And I go, put one of those hash browns on there and post this thing. And like, <laughs> I should have been hashtags. And I had three followers. That was a year. I uh, was a year. Uh, this past May was a year. Wow. And, uh, and so it was almost like a challenge thing. And then all of a sudden, I started to get responses. And you know how it is. You'll get a message from somebody that says, hey, what you said really affected me. Or it mm. found me at the right time. You know how this goes because you're in this space. And when you really feel like, oh, my gosh, I helped another human. Because there's, I'll just tell you, there's, everyone has multiple needs. Tony teaches this. I teach this. There's six human needs. And when you're young, one of the dominant needs you should have is to be significant, is to be recognized, is to win, is to want to be somebody. And I'll never lose that. All achievers have that. I want to win thing. But there does become a point in your life where that doesn't fulfill you anymore. And you can shift the contribution. And contribution is a need that will never 
be completely fulfilled. You'll never get overwhelmed with it. You'll never have enough contribution. And so I've sort of shifted. I'm a significance dude. Believe me, it's no, it's by no mistake the ocean's in the background here, right? Like yeah. you'll see you'll see videos with my jet. But I'm not like other dudes, probably other things where I'm like addicted to those things. I know for a fact I want everybody in here to have a jet or live on the ocean or live on the lake. I want you to have that because it's wonderful. Don't let anybody tell you it's not. But I also know for a fact it'll make you happy, but it will not fulfill you. It'll be temporary happiness. There's a big difference between temporary happiness and long-term fulfillment. Long-term fulfillment is contribution. And so, like, this is the stage of my life I've been the most fulfilled. So very quickly, I got addicted to the feeling of helping people, and it hasn't ended yet. So that was sort of the, the, the genesis of it was a challenge by Tony and then me following love with what I hopefully I can do sometimes for other people. So this is actually something that I, I think about, too, because I just came back from Tony's thing in New Jersey, like, last oh, weekend. You were at the UPW. Okay, cool. Yeah. 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 What did you think of it? I'm just curious. Good event, huh? Yeah, I mean, I've been, I've been before when it was in L.A., uh, but this time Tony brought me as a, as a special guest, and, like, sitting in the front row is a totally different experience. How do you know the thing that you're doing is actually contribution and you're not tricking yourself? That is... Still not Ooh. significant. Wow, he and I just talked about this. That's so okay. profound, brother. Like, um, I was talking to Rob Deerdick about this, who's been one of the guests on my show on Ridiculousness, and he hosts Ridiculous. He's also a very successful entrepreneur. And uh, this is amazing you asked this because I'm I'm wondering this very thing myself still. Hmm. And so um, when I met Rob, I said, "Dude, you're a contribution guy." The way he talked to my camera crew, how much he loved to help. I go, "Your contribution and then significance, right?" And then we went to a Rams game a few weeks ago. He goes, hey, bro, I've been fake. I just want you to know I'm not. I'm significance contribution. I'm still a significance guy. And so right after that, I went to Abu Dhabi. I was with Tony over there for about eight days. And I said that to him, too. And I still think probably I'm a significance person. But now, and this is important distinction, I get my significance from contributing. Mm. I, I used to get my significance from stuff, winning, achievement, money, um, what people thought about me, you know, the jet. And by the way, I still get some of it that way. But now the way I feel the most significant is by contributing to others. And so I mm. probably am a significant person contribution. And it's funny. Rob and I are at the, the Rams game, and he goes, let's list guys we know. And, and, and he goes, Tom Brady, significant contribution. Sly Stallone, significant contribution. Tony Robbins, significant contribution, right? We started listing mega achievers. And we both kind of came to the conclusion that probably the best combination for the most fulfilled people is their significance contribution people. And so I mm. probably you, best question, honest to God, that's the best question anybody's asked me because I'm struggling with how I want to frame that and reference it about myself right now. And I think you're right. It's probably significance and then contribution. So Tony has you go through what your two things are. And I had growth as my second so I had significance and contribution as a joint one, and I think last year was probably like 60% significance and 40% contribution, and I feel like mm -hmm. this year I flipped it. So I'm 60% mm -hmm. contribution, 40% significance. Yeah. But I don't know if I can ever get to zero. Like maybe it's 90-10 is like an ideal state, 90% contribution, yeah. but there's still that 10% significance. And can I say something on that? Because like, yeah. I didn't know we would talk about something probably this profound, but. I've gone through all kinds of that with myself. Like, is it that unhealthy to want significance? Right. And I even went all the way. I mean, this is extreme, and I'm not telling you I've thought this all the way through, so don't anybody hold me to this. But I went all the way through who most people would say is the ultimate contributor in Jesus. Hmm. Did Jesus seem to lack all significance? I mean, he did say, I, I am the Messiah. I am the truth, right? I mean, I don't... I think to say that even the greatest contributors didn't have any significance element. I'm not talking about humility. Humility is different. You can be a big significance person and still be humble, right. right? I think all great leaders have some significance in there. I just do. I don't think it's something to avoid. And, I, and I'm no longer trying to act like I'm elevated beyond being in somebody who's into significance. And let me say this. If in any way Tony's trying to say he's not after significance, he's not being honest. He loves right. being significant. <laughs> he really loves me. So, and I love that I, like a brother. I love him. But I think even Tony, being honest, would say he's big time significance person. He can't get through it. But I'll just leave it there. He's, he likes significance in a good way. And yeah. by the way, his desire to gain significance has changed millions of other people's lives. And I'd like to right. think that that's what I'm doing as well. So, 
Got it. Cool. Well, I appreciate your perspective on it, man. It's been yeah. something I've been thinking about. You've got your podcast. You've got your YouTube. You've got your Instagram. It's been blowing up. Yeah. Um, you know, I've been doing. I've been doing my channel. It's ten years. November, I had my channel. So it's been a decade of this. Congratulations. Um, thanks, man. And, and and like you seem to come out of nowhere. It's like it was nothing, and then hey, Ed Milet, you got to follow Ed Milet. Yeah. Ed Milet. Yeah. So you kind of burst onto the scene, and I love it. Like, what's the next thing that you're focused on? Is it like I want to keep just doing more of what I'm doing? Is it still just a podcast, Instagram, YouTube? You're gonna, where do you see yourself going? No, I have a uh, program now called the RSA Syndicate that I've partnered with Andy Frisella on. It's a, it's one of them is called the Syndicate. It's a live mentoring program, pretty expensive, where people talk with us every week and we meet once a quarter. And I'm doing that, so I'm actually engaged directly in their lives. Then we created another program called the RSA Accelerator. It's just a few hundred dollars a month. But every week they're on a call with me or Andy. And then we have live meetings from time to time as well, Facebook group. And so I'm working with those folks too. So I'm engaging a little beyond the podcast. Um, in terms of my show, to, you know, in all candor, I haven't got any of this done. But I've had discussions with Netflix and some other people about taking my show to perhaps a, another platform or a bigger platform. Um, but what I do want to do is I'm creating a program right now. I just wrote my book, Max Out Your Life, which... We've sold uh, about 700,000 copies of, so that's nice. pretty significant. Um, by the way, I'm not pitching this either. It's totally free. You can just go to maxoutbook.com and put in the code maxout. The book's free, and there's no upsell afterwards. It's not like click here, buy my book, and then get a seminar. It's just a free book, so you can right. go get that. Um, and so I'm just trying to start to create more and more content that affects people and find the best mediums to do it. And frankly, the reason that I think my stuff has grown, and I'm not trying to be – um, braggadocious in this regard uh, my content's good like my content is stuff that can really affect you and change you I'm not going to tell you 1100 times to get your money I'm not going to tell you to uh, be kind 1100 times and just repeat myself or binary and all this stuff the guys just keep repeating themselves and it's just it's mindless information I don't even understand how they have following to be honest with you it's like I've heard you say this same thing 2000 different times whereas I'm trying to keep my content fresh, relevant, inspirational, but also strategic. And that's not knocking people. It's just I think you do this very well. Like if you're going to be in this space, really bring value to people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If people are going to follow you, give them value and inspiration for the, the privilege of them following you. So I feel an obligation to try to create stuff daily when I can to uh, move someone's life forward. And so I feel like I want it to be like this, like people that follow me feel like, man, I get to talk to him every day just a little bit. And so that's sort of been the, the genesis of it. And I, my goal, just so you know, my goal is I want to reach 100 million people the next three years with my stuff. And so I've got a lot of work to do. And I'm, I've been talking to different people in the space. I've talked to Grant Cardone. I've talked to Andy. I've talked to Tony Robbins. Like, what's the best way to to get this stuff out there that's in an unconventional fashion other than just Instagram, other than just uh, you know, YouTube. There's got to be better venues, and maybe Netflix is that place for me. I'm not sure. I would love to see even do bigger on YouTube, man. I'd love like you I'd... to help me. To be honest with you, I'm lost there. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to promote it. We just sort of stick my stuff up there. Where yeah. I really do well, because my content's long, so I do well on one-minute videos on Instagram, because I'm pretty good at getting a message out in a minute, and my audios do very well. Um, maybe that's because I'm not pleasant to look at and my voice is okay, right? But I think the other part of it is just my content's an hour long. I think perhaps that affects people wanting to watch a video for an hour. But I would love, because you're a YouTube guru, I would love you to mention me on that because I don't know what I'm doing on YouTube. So I'd love your information on that. Anything you can tell me. Yeah, man. Listen, I'm happy to help. We can take this offline with me and yeah. you or you and your team. But my sure. best video on my channel is 40 minutes long. Like long is great. Okay. If it's good, right? And yeah, you, yeah. and I know you have good stuff. It's something yeah. that I'm talking to, uh, like Tony, same thing. Like he needs to be going long. For, like his stuff is forever long. Yeah. But but you can win. You can like YouTube is the place to go long, okay. and you could you could really crush it. Let's um, talk about that. But this is good for other people because a lot of people that are listening to this great content want to know how to get out there too. And so um, I, I'm going to pick your brain about that. That's a big clue for everyone watching this. I learn from everybody. So mm -hmm. you're you're better at getting traffic on youtube to me why in the world would i not humble myself and get everything i can learn from you possibly and so i'm we're going to do that so thank you i'd love to see you win harder man like thank you brother for real and most that's people, mutual i would with you as well most people can make long videos but they repeat themselves a hundred times and not saying yeah. anything where yeah. where i know you've got like a lot of 
depth to it, which you can really crush at. Um, how do you feel about people stopping you in a restaurant now? You know what? I, I, uh, people are wonderful. I did have, you know, there's things that come with it. I had someone uh, yesterday show up at my home. Mm. Scared, scared my family. Don't ever do that, by the way, everybody. I mean, you see someone in a restaurant, that's wonderful. You don't go to someone's home. So I love it. And and uh, and I think anybody who tells you that they're bothered by the attention they get from other beautiful souls has an ego problem. I, you know, honestly, man, it's, it's a wonderful thing. For me, sometimes like, well, I can't believe people listen to me. You know, mm. and uh, and and so I'm grateful for any uh, positive. I'm actually grateful for any interaction, even if I, I I've had people give me feedback that you know, I I interviewed Rachel Hollis, whom oh I, yeah great I adore her right, and we had such an amazing interview, and it got several hundred thousand audio downloads, and I had a few people message me say, hey, you referred to her as precious in the interview. Don't mm. refer to a woman as precious. I'm like, my God, my wife's precious, my daughter's precious, my mom's precious. You know, so it wasn't really feedback I enjoyed hearing, but it was like feedback. So like, okay, I, if that bothers somebody, I'll watch it. I can't please everybody. So I even like interaction with people when it's not positive. But I love walking into the gym. I just left the gym. You know, it's hard to get a workout in now, but I love walking into a place and people say thank you because that's the main thing that I get and that you get. You know what it usually is? Is thank you, thank you, thank you, and then typically like. Can I tell you how you've helped me? Which is just wonderful to hear. And then typically a question, right? Then one question. And I, I'm glad to answer any question I can for somebody. So I, I love it. And I've had the benefit, brother, of the last 20 years. You know this, but maybe the audience doesn't know it. I sort of have been blessed that where I live, prior to me being relatively well-known, most of my friends have been well-known people. So I've mm. watched my friends, actors and athletes the last 20 years, how they handle it. And the ones that are gracious and the ones that aren't. And I've watched a few of them handle it poorly where I thought, you know, the rest of that person's life, they're going to remember that encounter with you that wasn't good. And then I have other friends who are wonderful with each and every single person. And I learned from that. And then the other thing is this. You usually get the best version of somebody. Mm. I usually get the best version of that person because they're happy to meet me. So what a blessing from God that I get to see the best in almost every single person. So I love it. What I find really interesting in that is, is Tony called you out because that was something that you thought would be an inconvenience to you, but it ends up being a massive yeah. blessing. The reason is, is that he knows how introverted I am. Mm. And so uh, I have people say, don't admit you're shy, don't admit you're introverted, that's not true. Well, that's, it's totally true. I'm an introverted person, I'm a private person, I'm shy, I've worked on those things. Those aren't, it's not who I am, it's behaviors that I have. And so he knew intuitively, if he didn't give me massive pain, you know, the pain pleasure stuff, if he just mm -hmm. said, hey, you should really consider you're a pretty good speaker getting out there in public. I'd be like, I considered it. No. What he did is right. he went to massive pain, gave me a massive dose of pain. I went, I don't like that. And so he knew he needed to go that way because of my, my uh, proclivity to be introverted. So it was great. Well, I love that how sometimes the things that we think are the biggest inconvenience end up being the best blessings. Absolutely, man. Almost every single time. In fact, I posted a speech today that I gave to, I, went, I got invited back to speak to um, my college alma mater's baseball team. I played college baseball at University of Pacific. And um, I went back there and spoke to the guys. And there's a part in the talk where I tell them that I was so introverted. My senior year, I wasn't going to graduate. And I had to take two electives because I wasn't going to graduate. And I, got, I had previously dropped out of a sign language class. Sign language. Because I had to get up in front of the class and sign. It was, I didn't even have to even speak. I just wouldn't walk up there and move my fingers around. And I dropped the class. And so... It put me where I wasn't going to graduate. Mm. And so the only class I could take to graduate was drama and public speaking. And I had to take them both. And in the public speaking class, I found a giftedness of mine. Mm. Right? And so what you're saying is completely true. I talk about in this speech. Typically on the other side of your greatest fear, of your greatest insecurity, is your greatest blessing. Everyone goes, well, get out of your comfort zone. You'll find things. No, no, no. What you're afraid of. And what you're insecure about on the other side of that is typically one of the great gifts or blessings in your life. And mm. so that's exactly right. You and I are talking right now because I took a public speaking class my senior year. I was stone ass afraid of in college. That's why you and I are talking right now. So you're absolutely, it, right. you're absolutely and, and right. And how many people have been touched now because of you taking that class? And, and mutual, right? And somehow that blessing, that seemingly inconsequential scary pain in the ass for me changed my entire life and has changed frankly millions of other people's lives because i went around that thing i was afraid of it's like you don't even know the magnitude of what it's costing you 
to give in to your fears and insecurities. And by the way, insecurities and fears are different things. They're both really insidious, detrimental things that people struggle with. And so on the other side of your fear, that's one thing. And on the other side of your greatest insecurity are blessings. And you have no idea the immeasurable waves that you're missing in your life because you are giving into them and cowering to them. And so it's like, my life's totally different. Take me a little deeper there. What, what's the difference between fear and insecurity? Well, fear is something that as you stare at it, there's a reaction in your body that's actually healthy. It's to protect you. We have fear in our, in our nature because way back in the day, this is how we survived, right? So mm. fear is not an unhealthy thing. What it is is it's an alert to you that, hey, there's something here you need to be more aware of. Fear is an awareness emotion. What most people think is it's an avoidance emotion. Fear is to make you aware, right? So I had a little fear in an odd way when my daughter was being born, when my son was being born. I wasn't afraid of having a daughter. It was an awareness of all the great things that could come with it and my fear of what could go wrong that day, right? So thank God my daughter was born. So that fear wasn't some sign it shouldn't happen or we shouldn't go through with it. It was a hyper awareness. Insecurity is a lie you tell yourself. Hmm. Insecurity is completely different. Insecurity is mainly things that don't exist that you should not be aware of. So ironically, people conflate these two things. An insecurity is something that you've told yourself that is more than likely a lie about you. I'm stupid. Hmm. I'm short. Nobody loves me. No one's going to listen to me. I'm not strong enough. I'm going to blow this, right? What are they going to think about me? These are all fabrications of your imagination. Fear is a real thing that you should acknowledge and see and respond to favorably. Insecurities are lies. And so most people don't make that distinction and they actually think their insecurities are things they should be aware of. When in fact, insecurities are things you should not be aware of. Totally different thing. By the way, we should be, we should be selling this content right now. This is good. I, I, I'm looking forward to the, to the, to the, to the one hour YouTube video where you, right, where you dive right. super deep on it. You're, you're, you're reading, you're actually completely, I'm so sick now, right? You're reading my mind. I'm like, okay, that's, yeah, that's what it's I'm coming. Right it's coming. Cool. Uh, man, it's crazy how quickly time flies. I know we're bumping yeah. up against the clock for, yeah. for my audience. If they want to dive deeper into your world, what's the best place to start? Oh boy, uh, right here, Instagram, and then go to my podcast on iTunes. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel. Evan's going to help me grow that. So It's coming. But, and I've got a website, edmylet.com. I do put out newsletters there where I do some of the stuff. Here's the deal, man. A lot of people don't read right now. And so what I do is I do a lot of the reading for you, and then I'll send you out a newsletter with a summation about what I'm reading. And if you just read my email, you'll be reading some of the books I've been reading too. So you can go to my website too. So and thank, By the way, thanks for today, man. I enjoyed it very much. Love it, man. Thanks for making the time. Really appreciate it. And um, we'll connect again soon. I, I want to. I'm looking forward to that. Take care, everybody. Awesome. God bless you. Take care. Thanks, Ed. Cheers. Right, bye-bye. See you. Also, if you want to know what I think and what other successful entrepreneurs think about building confidence, check out my new 254 Confidence Series where every day for the next 254 days for free, I will send you a 30-second to 5-minute video in the morning to help you build unstoppable confidence. The link is in the description below. If you want to be more confident, you need to surround yourself with things that make you feel confident. Realizing that any big endeavor is the collection of a lot of small steps that came before. If you're doing work that you love, you're more likely to follow through. You're more likely to do it because it doesn't feel like work because you love doing it. So let me give you the one word secret to happiness. One word. This is all you need to be happy. The most important word ever. If you had to think of one word that's most important to you or that sums you up or that would be kind of like a little beacon. If you want more Ed Milet, check out the top 10 rules video I made on him. The link is right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. I had some health issues when I was younger with my heart. I am grateful many mornings I wake up.